Hey guys, Drew Takush Collectibles, welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, we're going to be talking about three coins that we traded for a bunch of Morgan dollars. We're excited to show you the process, how it all worked out. Let's get this video started. So this past weekend, we got to sit down with one of our customers at a local spot. We got to end up creating a trade between us and them. And so we ended up compiling three key date Morgan dollars. One's a 89cc in VF25, one's a 96s in AU50. And one's a 93S in uh, VG8, I believe. If not, the photo will correct it. But we did end up getting that coin stickered, which is from a few videos back. Make sure to check out the CAC mission that's coming out later this week. But we got to trade those three coins for uh, a really great amount of premium quality coins. This collector knew what he was doing. He'd love to pick out great almost white coins or nicely toned coins. And so... When you're sitting down working a deal with somebody, you really want to be able to, um, you know, sell great coins because customers might not might not have wanted those coins, and then you get to buy some great coins to share with your customers online. And so we're going to spend a few minutes today showing you guys the trade, all the great coins that we picked up. But first, let's talk to you a little bit about a lesson that has been really on our heart lately. We hope you guys enjoy that. So I want to take a minute to discuss with you a lesson that I learned early on as someone that. Is moving into business, you know, either online or in a shop setting or in a show setting. You know, God's been really working on me and trying to perfect this in me for a while, which is how do you respond to something that's not going your way, right? Uh, say the deal isn't working out or someone says something disrespectful to you or, you know, maybe someone wasted your time. Someone brought you something and you overpaid, they overpaid for it. They want you to overpay for it and they won't budge on it. The deal isn't working out. Everything seems wrong. You wasted your time. It feels like how do you respond, right? How do you respond as a coin dealer? And I think, you know, you realize that you're not going to get the coins or you're not going to sell the coin or whatever. You have to say to yourself, what is this relationship worth to me? How do I want to respond to bear fruit from this relationship, even though right now it seems like it's barren and it's having uh, issues, right? So there's certain circumstances or instances where you can change what you say to um, make people understand your heart behind the situation, right? So say someone comes up to your table at a show and they they paid a thousand dollars over for something, right? So say something selling for two thousand, they paid three thousand for it. They want you to pay thirty three hundred. The coin's great. You love the coin. You'd love to have it in your you know in your catalog for people to look at. Maybe buy, ship it to that person. You love to buy it back from that person one day, right? But they just pay too much. What do you say? Well, there's some dealers that say, you overpaid for this piece of crap. I don't want it. Stop wasting my time. Keep going around the show. Uh, maybe you should figure out what to pay for that coin next time. I've heard that 10, 15 times, right? Or the other approach is, is man, I love this coin. You know, what we typically do is we try to work in 10% profit margins so that when our customers buy the coin, they end up loving it, and then if we ever buy it back from them, we try to get that 10% back and try to sell it again. You know, you paid very strong for this coin, and like I said, it's a great coin, but for us, it may not work. You know, it might not work in this situation. We'd love to take a look at other coins that you might have, but sadly, this coin is not for us. There's other circumstances where a dealer is upset. The dealer needs to blow off some steam, or our customer needs to blow off some steam. So they'll call you, and they'll start yelling, and they'll be upset, and what you do will be a reflection of what you will receive in the future. So say someone calls you and they're upset, they're mad, and they're angry, and you respond with anger, you respond with yelling, you respond with, uh, you know, you're upset as well. Um, how will that impact you on your future transactions with other people? If I respond to that person with an angry, upset attitude, how will the rest of my customers feel that day when I respond to their phone calls? Am I going to now respond defensively? Am I going to now respond with, uh, with anger and with vitriol? That, for me, has been a big help. Change what you say. Change your heart behind the matter. And that will end up bringing a lot of people to get to know you as a person. Get to want to buy from you because they feel like they trust you. And that's really what's been making us successful. A lot of people come to us sometimes and say, Hey, a coin dealer is really mean to me. A coin dealer was was rude, um, was very cutthroat, and you guys seem like you're balanced, decent people. And so when you're moving into becoming a business owner or a coin dealer, 
you need to change the way that you respond to people because ultimately how you respond is what you will receive. How you respond is what you will receive. And that will be the same with somebody that is having a bad day and responding rudely, right? What they say, what they do, they will bear fruit for it. What you say, what you do is how you will bear fruit as well. So become the person that they need in that moment to say, hey, bro, I love you. You're a good person. You're having a hard time right now, but I'm not going to stoop down to that level. I hope this helps you see how we respond and how we try to treat our customers because at the end of the day, it's about growing the hobby, making it bigger, um, and also being honest with people without hurting their feelings or pushing them away. All right, guys, so the first coin I want to show you in this video is this 1903S Morgan Dollar. It's got a cleany look to it. It's a better date, but we got it for a decent price, and that's okay. It's got a little crack here in the holder, um, but a little bit of backstory behind this set. He said, hey, I'm looking for, you know, I've already upgraded most of these coins and I'm just looking to move them and hopefully get some new upgrades. And so we ended up saddling him up with those three new upgrades, ended up giving him some cash on top, which is great. The next coin is a 1903 Philly in mid state 64. And we're going to go back to just talking about, hey, man, let me look how nice the, the luster is. Um, look how overall the grade's really nice as well. Just coins you really want to be able to buy and share with people, and that one's really nice. Next coin is another 1903 Philly, Grayman State 63. Great cartwheel luster, just a few tickiness issues out in the fields. They kind of kept it from going to a 4 or anything higher, but definitely has some nice gemmy luster to it. The next coin is this 1902 O, New Orleans Mint. Morgan Dollar, Great Mint State 65. Gorgeous looking gem. Rather clean cheek for sure. And uh, yeah, it's, it's just good to have these as stock for people that maybe they're wanting a gem set of Morgan Dollars. And, you know, that's rather affordable. It's a common date, of course. The next coin is this 1900 Philly Morgan Dollar, Great Mint State 65. Probably close to a six by today's standards, but. We're not really going to mess with that. That's okay. But this one can be a little bit more tough in terms of it being common. I think these sometimes add a little bit more premium just because uh, Phillies are, go for a little bit more money. Let's go to a little bit of a better day here. This is 1884S Morgan Dollar graded AU53. This coin really jumps up in AU55, but we were able to buy it before that spread. And if anyone that doesn't know what a spread is, a spread basically is what's the difference between this grade and the next grade, and is it worth it for me? So this coin sells for about $400. I think it's about double in AU55. And so being able to buy that coin in 53 is great, just because we can offer a more affordable listing rather than more of an expensive one in AU55. And sometimes 55s can be a little bit tougher. Here's a cool proof like Morgan Dollar that you don't normally see, 1878 Seven Tail Feather. Great mid state 63 proof like. Definitely some nice deeper mirrors. And, you know, like I said, I just don't see this coin with proof like very often. And so it was cool to be able to pick this up. Then we have an 1889S Morgan Dollar, great mid state 63. Has a few light coin rolls on the coin. I think that's what held it back. But once again, the eye appeal is all there. And it's a tougher San Francisco Mint coin, which is always pretty cool. Then we have an 1884S, another one. This one's graded XF45+. plus. There's only two in XF45+, plus at PCGS. And, uh, yeah, just an interesting kind of weird grade. And uh, it's just a neat little piece. This tray is going to be full, by the way, because we have about... 38 or 37 Morgan dollars to show you, so it's going to be interesting. So we have this 81S Morgan dollar graded mid state 65 proof like. Definitely nice proof like fields. Love the look of the detail of the coin. You can see almost like a cameo look to it. And it's a little bit sharper on the reverse than the obverse. And uh, yeah, just an absolute beauty. Then we have an 1884O Morgan dollar graded mid state 65 plus. CAC approved. So more common dates have come down a little bit, but 
that's just a good time to be able to pick it up and buy it for a more affordable price. I think these used to sell for around like 250, 275, and they've come back down to about 190 without the sticker and about 220 with the sticker. So, but this coin is super close to 66, and uh, we thought it was just super fair and nice for the grade. Then we have this 1890O Morgan dollar, created MS63, CEC approved. We're going to show you guys a 91O later in this video, but most of the time with these, the strike is super weak, and it's hard to get those 63, 64, 65 grades on these coins, but this one has a better strike and some decent luster still remaining on the coin. It's a little bit suppressed, as you can see, but that's okay. Then we have a better date, 1878 CC, Morgan Dollar. And it's an old green holder, which is an OGH. Nice flashy coin. And uh, just lovely. Glad we're able to share it. And when you're at a coin show, you know, sometimes you think, oh, I need the most coolest, flashiest, awesome coin ever. But sometimes someone's just looking for a date. They're not wanting to buy it online necessarily, and you're the guy. So having this many uh, different dates to be able to offer maybe at a coin show or in a coin shop is really great. And so this is an 1881cc Morgan Dollar, graded Mint State 63. A little beat up on the cheek there, but the luster really has carried it all the way. This one is a little bit tougher, definitely a better date. And maybe for someone like you, you don't see it too often if you don't go to a ton of coin shows. And we sell most of these coins at about 10% profit margin right at what they sell for. And so the next coin is this 1883cc Morgan Dollar, graded Mint State 63. Someone cracked this out of a GSA holder, you know, one of those thick, you know, long gated GSA holders, and they sent it into PCGS, or they had PCGS crack it out for them. But Interesting that somebody did that. It still has some, still a nice coin overall, and it does have that pedigree for you, just so you know where it comes from. Then we have an 1887S Morgan Dollar, graded AU58. Just a little subtle wear on the coin, which is okay. And uh, overall, it's a, it's a tougher date, so I think this coin's like $120 in, in 63. No, in, in AU58. In 63, it has a really big jump. And so, once again, offering it kind of in that middle ground, something that's rather affordable. Now, I'm just going to move this tray up here real quick. The next coin is this 1890S Morgan Dollar, great in state 63 proof like. Definitely has some proof like fields to it. Very happy to be able to buy this coin too because it feels like the only proof likes I run into are 80Ss or 81Ss. And that sometimes is just no bueno for me. I'd rather have some more interesting proof likes to show you guys, and that one definitely uh, fits the mold. Next one is a little bit of a better date, 1901P, great AU55. Has a little light cleaning to the coin, but there is still some great remaining luster, especially that's kind of what AU need needs to uh, kind of meet their quota. You can see that luster cartwheeling on the reverse too. Up next is a tougher Carson City Morgan Dollar. This is an 1890CC. Great Mint State 63, you can see those little bit of striations right out in front of the nose, which holds it back from it being any higher in grade, but it has some lovely rim toning to the coin, and uh, just super, super flashy. Next coin is another 1884S, but with some more of album toning, I think they left this in some cardboard or in an, like an envelope. It's, remember those little vanilla envelopes that... Some coin dealers bring their coins around in. This one probably just sat in there a little bit too long. Had some nice color to it over time, but it became a little bit terminal. But you can see all that great luster just beaming off the coin. Up next is another 90S, but with some character. So this one, you know, it's uh, got that bigger hit right out in front of the face. But it has some nice rim tone of the coin. It is CAC approved. And uh, buying better dates is, is just a great, great opportunity. You know, a lot of the coins we're running to that are Morgans right now are 1887s and Mint State 62 or 3, right? You don't necessarily want 150 of those, but you, you do sometimes want to buy some better dates just so Morgan dollar collectors can be happy. So we have this 1921 and MS63. It's got some color to it. That's kind of the only reason why I picked it up. 
and uh, nothing too crazy or special about that coin. Then we have this 1888 Philly, created mint state 65. Just a great look to the coin. Then we have this 1888 which is actually pretty tough in gem. It's great mint state 65. It's got a nice strike to it, like we're talking about. New Orleans mints can have weaker strikes, and this one definitely has a little bit of a better one, and that's why they gave it that gem grade. If strikes become a little bit weak on any coin, I think most of the time they just hold it back from gem, which is unfortunate, but that's at least something that you can use as a guide if you're at a show and you're seeing something raw. So we have another tough proof like 1887-0, graded mint state 63, and... Uh, it's you know it's a little bit of a, a washed out proof like for me, but that's kind of how New Orleans mints come in terms of proof likes. They're not going to be the most flashiest. They didn't clean and polish the dyes too often, as opposed to the San Francisco mint, and that's why they become a little bit more dull in terms of their eye appeal in proof like and in deep mirror proof like. Here's a tougher coin, one of my favorites of the buy. This is the 1879s Morgan dollar, but it has a reverse of an 1878. So when you flip it over, most of the time the 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 t I'm sorry the breast feathers are raised, but with 78s they're not raised; they're actually flat. And so finding a, a 79s reverse of 78 is really tough; becomes very expensive. And so this one is just a nice middle ground for somebody that needs the date but doesn't want to spend thousands of dollars um, in certain mint state grades. I think that one's around three or four hundred bucks, something like that. Here's another tough Morgan Dollar 1891-0 um, in Mint State 63. These come really weak all the time. They come super, super weak. I think gem in these coins is six or 7,000, might be even more. But none of them come very strong in terms of, of strike. And most of the time, they just look beat up. In this coin, you can see that the breast feathers are flat. And you can also see, hey, like the detail on the face is really flat as well. It's got some kind of bigger issues out in the field, some ticky marks and some coin rolls. And so, you know, it's it's still a really expensive coin. It's like $500 coin in, in 63, but it really jumps up in those other grades. And so we were able to buy it just before that crazy jump. Here's a cool VAM that people like and still collect. It seems like there's not a lot of VAMs that people really enjoy anymore, apart from the ones that jump out. 82 over S, and it's strong. It's, got, it's a nice white coin, but when you flip it over, it's really going to be hard for me to pick up. You're going to have to take a look on AkushaCollectibles.com, but the O over S, you can see the S just slashed right through uh, the New Orleans mint, mint mark. And uh, people really love this VAM still, so I thought it was neat to pick up. He had a few other VAMs, but they just didn't seem like they have the customer base for us to be able to buy and sell those. And so that's completely understandable. Here's the 1890. Oh, Morgan Dollar, Great Mint State 63 dimple. You can see, like I, like I was talking about earlier, a little bit washed out, but still a dimple, and that's what PCGS saw it as, probably what uh, NGC might see it as too, but not super deep. And so that's the discrepancy we talked to him about as well, is that when you see it, an, a New Orleans mint with a really black and white dimple look to it, those demand a lot of premium. Some of that are a little bit more washed out, they just demand about what they're selling for, or maybe even a little less. Like this coin, you know, it would sell on eBay for 500 bucks. But we're going to offer it for 450 just because it's not crazy in terms of its dimple appearance. But if it was really great in its dimple appearance, we would be asking six, seven hundred dollars for that coin. So there is a big difference with that. Um, so there's a 19030 Morgan Dollar Great Mint State 65. These come very lackluster from what I see. And so when I saw this coin, I saw the luster of the coin. I mean, I mean, just, it's a baller. It's a great coin, right? It's a nice gem. It's super flashy. And it's a little bit of a tougher date to run into. I think these sell for anywhere between nine, $900 and $1,000. $900 if they're lackluster, $1,000 if they have some good luster. And so that one, I'm going to have to price strong, but it's a, still a neat coin for sure. 1901S Morgan Dollar. This one's a key date, MS61. It's got some kind of distracting tone into the coin, but it still has some decent remaining luster for a 61. 
And then we have, I'm going to show you guys, this is our last coin of this video. It's a 1899-0 Morgan dollar grade, Mint State 65. Almost looks like a 6 by today's standards, but I'm just going to leave it as it is. It's a little bit too beat up on the breast feathers there for me to call it a 6, but just a lovely group of coins, guys. I mean, holy crap. You know what I mean? We got so many great coins. We still have five or six coins that we'd love to show you guys, but uh, maybe in a different video. But thank you guys so much for taking a look.